Hey ladies and gentlemen, Jay Sanchez, aka $3 Mustache Ride here. I'm going to be talking about this new song by this band, Pale Waves. Um, I'm not going to go into like a whole history lesson, mostly because I don't know much, that much about them, and I didn't do any research for this. But Pale Waves is a rock band from England. They kind of have like a, uh, a post-punky, pop-punk, 1975 kind of feel, at least with their first breakout hit, um television romance definitely felt like it was inspired by uh, Matt Healy's music but uh, they put out an album last year which probably changed and evolved their sound I don't know I didn't listen to it I listened to one song off of it and then immediately forgot it and I was scrolling through title yesterday and uh, title suggested a new song by them a new single out ahead of their new album I'm going to guess because the artwork for the single says unwanted on it so i'm going to guess that they have a new album coming out again i didn't do any research i just hit record i'm not even going to edit this video but yeah the song is called lies and it gets started with a a cool garage rocky new wave uh distorted guitar riff just like an opened chumming jangly guitar riff uh playing some eighth notes over which the lead singer you know, starts sings the intro for the chorus. And then the guitar stops and then it goes into like this Paramore style instrumentation, like syncopated section where the the downbeats come on the two, like the downbeat comes on measure two, on beat two of the measure. And then it does like a syncopated thing around the fourth beat of the measure. If you're a musician, you'll know exactly what I mean. But like all pop punk, post punk bands use that at some point. And I like the intro. I like the way the verses are written. I like the choruses for the song because that that post punk uh, new wave eighth eighth note guitar pattern comes back. And uh, when they just when they let the guitar just play and just let it play out, it sounds awesome. The problem is, every time that part starts to get good, they stop and they go back to the other part that I just mentioned, the Paramore style section. And while I like both parts of the song, it's clear that while they were writing the song, there was no real cohesive way to like bring it together and make it sound like part of the same thing. So it literally just sounds like you're going back and forth between two different songs. And the two different songs are linked by... The first part of the song is connected to the second part of the song by like this cool little build-up where the drums start you do the drums start doing some fills, and it's like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. It, it, if you're a musician, again, you'll know what I mean. If you listen to the song, you'll know exactly what the fuck I mean. And it starts to build up. It starts to build up. But then it just goes back to like the intro verse... Uh, to the intro chorus part and it's just it's just like oh okay i thought something i thought something was about to happen i thought, so, I thought you were building up to something else instead you're just doing the thing that i already heard you do and i guess that's not a bad thing repetition is part of songwriting i mean that's kind of the point that's part of why this song caught in my head is because it had a repetitive catchy nature but it does get a little bit too repetitive. It literally sounds like they just wrote two different parts of two different songs and then linked them together with a kind of like bridge thing. Because musically, when you take the song apart, the, the individual parts make sense themselves. But they don't make any sense together. It's kind of the musical equivalent of edging. Every time something, every time I'm starting to enjoy a part of the song, every time I'm like, oh yeah, don't stop, keep doing that. It literally stops and starts doing something else. And it's just kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of a drag, I guess. Because it's a two minute and 50 second song. It's very short, but it feels longer than it is because of this kind of musically incohesive nature. This, uh, this, the way it just kind of bounces back and forth between two, doing two different things that I like but not doing either one of them long enough for me to enjoy it and lose my mind over. I can feel myself wanting to like it more than I do, but it still comes up short for me. And 
part of that wants to be like, oh, that's just me as a, you know, I don't, I'm not too, I'm not big brained enough to get what's going on here or whatever. But the fact of the matter is they got so close. And when you get close to doing something good or doing something perfect, the flaws become apparent. And that's what happened here. That's why I recorded this video in the first place, because it made me feel some kind of way. And now I just realized this song gets so close to being good that its shortcomings are just that much more apparent and it, they're, they're kind of put under the microscope. And because I'm aware of what the shortcomings of the song are, I'm not able to fully enjoy the parts of the song. I'm not able to fully enjoy what I do actually like about the song. So my initial enjoyment of this song was at like an eight, but under a little bit more, under a little bit more, under a couple of more listens and, and trying to like, you know, extract and figure out what was going on here. I figured out that I, I just ultimately, this song gets close to being a good song. It was so close. And I feel like that's a big problem with Pale Waves music, just kind of like in general. They get close to being a good band. They get close to making great songs. And they just shoot themselves in the foot because they're too afraid to commit to an idea or something. And I, they could they could just do they could do better. They could do so much better. And I want them to. And I I need them to. Pale Waves should be a great band. That's how I feel. They should be a great band. We should be talking about them way more than we do. For all these people talking about how rock and roll is dead, well. You know, it's not. It's not at all. But then again, I can't put all my chips. I can't go all in on Pale Waves because, like I said, they get very close to being, to doing, you know, they get very close to doing a full good song, but it's only like 66% there. But the 66% that is there is really fucking good. Anyway. All that to say, Pale Ways has a new song out. Check it out. It's it's pretty catchy. It's pretty it's pretty fun if you like that sort of thing. You know, if you're if you're into new wave-ish post-punk garage type, you know, stuff. It's it's got a very interesting sound. You know, if you if you've been missing guitars in music, Pale Ways' new album is Pale Ways' new single, Lies, is uh it you might it might it might it might hold you over for a little bit. You know, it's not like a it's not like a, it's not a full course of a meal. It's, it's an aperitif is what it is. Uh, anyway, Jay Sanchez, Pale Waves. <laughs> I'm really trying not to rip off Anthony Fantano. <laughs>